はい。お願いします。お願いします。どうぞ、フォーカノ
and then just imagine the body's getting kind of pushed, the shoulders can start rolling. Play a little bit with the body. You can start to take it into kind of spiral work with the hips. Yeah, start to loosen everything up. You might feel as you do these, as we do these exercises, the shoulder get drawn out. Really feel now that the shoulder's gonna go back and down. So as you receive it, or you, as you receive the movement through the body, feel that rather than the shoulder kind of getting pulled out, it will kind of receive back and down. So feel now the hip, or the, feel now the shoulder connecting into the hip. So the whole body's gonna to start to drain down. That's it. Good. Good. Nice and fluid. Good. Let's go a little bit into the side to side. Yeah, let the body sway. Really play in this case with the body compressing into one foot. So you're gonna really go all the way into one foot and the other side just gets kind of very loose. So I feel you've got a very clear anchor to one side of the body and the other side's just gonna flow over. That's it. Also the arms do this kind of similar thing. Drag down. Just feel the kind of whole weight of the body enter into one foot. Yeah, that's it. I was watching yesterday a film of uh, snakes on, on, on the hunt and they were just incredible over the sand like this. So this kind of quality you're looking for in, in a way is like this kind of snaking movement. So you want the whole body to do a kind of, like a, you're really passing a wave through your whole body. So it just starts kind of loosening it out a little bit more. And just imagine now, rather than just kind of pressing the weight to one side, you're actually going to move, you're going to pass the movement up the spine. And then it comes back down as well. So she does. Play a little bit of a kind of fluid move through the body. And then just start to kind of rotate it. Yeah. Just playing a little bit with the arms. And feel whatever you do with the arms, the shoulder's always going to kind of have this sense of being back and down. So even if you raise, or especially if you raise them, the quality in the shoulder is really kind of like it's hanging from the back. Just play a little bit with that. And this is really nice with these exercises because I'm not actively doing anything with the hands. But as soon as we go into kind of ikkyo work, the tendency is to come into the shoulder coming up. So really make the most of these exercises. You're not doing anything with the hands. You can really let the structure of the shoulder rest back and down. So just play a little bit with the arms. We're just connecting them into the hips again. And I probably usually find this easier just one side. So just, if you like, Place one hand on the center and just start to kind of connect it into the hip. Just play, play, play with one side. Nice movements. And we did these movements the other week with the, with the Bokka and these kind of side diagonals, rising diagonals, horizontal. And you've also got movements which come out this way. So just play a little bit with just connecting the hands the hip. And you probably start these exercises by doing it with the arm. I, I do in the morning anyway. So you start with this and then the more you get into it, the more you center the body. And then you can start to have the sense that the hand's following the center. Just play with it. And when you feel like it, just change sides. That's, that's okay, good. Nice. Also play with the elbow as well. So try and mobilize a little bit the whole arm. Comes out, comes back. And the elbow's also got this kind of quality, like there's always something kind of hanging on it. So it's got this kind of heavy quality. That's it. 
and then just play with both arms. And then kind of just play with different ideas. Maybe pulling the arms out, pulling them up, swinging them in opposite directions. You can also do this. So play with the body a little bit. So. Good. So. Okay, good. So we just go to the hips, just so we'll do <coughs> find the full range of motion. You're gonna really push to the front, push to the back. And then to the sides, nice. Oh, to the side, and then just mobilize all the way through. Especially now to the sides, there's a tendency in this move to kind of skip the sides. So really, I always imagine like a hula group in front of the body, and I'm kind of touching it with the hips. So you get the full, 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 full range of motion. And feel that this, this transition where you go really into the movement goes fully into one hip. And then they meet in the middle, and then you go to the other. And they meet at the back, and then you go to the other. So I think about passing the movement between the hips. Really try and maximize. Keep going. Good. That's it. Good, good, good. Nice. And then just working with the pelvis as well. So you, you can also now tilt the pelvis. So just play with basically curling the curling the tailbone in. You're gonna do this, and then you're gonna do this, open the pelvis out, and then the other direction you can do is up through the through the hip and then up through the hip this way. So just play with these directions. They're quite strange and they're quite subtle as well. So just play a little bit with tilting, tucking. Raising one side, raising the other. The key is really feeling that the movement kind of originates in the in the in the pelvis. So really, let's see if you can mobilize these areas. That's that. good. And then just a little bit. But this kind of figure of eight movement. The key now is that the whole hip's gonna really be flexible. Very strange movement. But it's very nice. Again, just to mobilize. Okay. Okay. Just a little bit wider to the hand capability. And then just again tilting the body, just release through the arms and just go towards the ground. And just feel the arms really release all the way through the shoulders, through the back, and just take a moment, just breathing. Just feel the kind of weight of the upper body. Gravity is kind of pulling through the spine. Feel the, the basic creating space through the spine. And really feel, in this case, this is very easy to feel, but feel that the head is really now included in the spine. So really feel the head really be connected into the lower back and also the arms as well. So really feel that the arms are now connected into the lower into the lower back and into the lower body. So you should feel the upper body very light and the lower body is very heavy. And then just feel that there's a kind of a kind of springiness in the knees. Just start to move the hands up and down. So just kind of pulsing a little bit through the knees and see if on the release down towards the ground you can release more and you can lengthen more. So it's a, it's more about the downwards pull and kind of pulling the arms up. But just feel the weight of the ground really kind of receive the body. Just play a little bit. It's also nice to kind of play with one side of the arm or one side of the body and kind of like pass the movement into one side. Just play a little bit, slightly twisting it. And then just from this position, just place the hands into the ground, the fingertips. 
depending on how flexible you are this morning. And then just feel that you can pass away through the whole spine. So right from the pelvis, all the way through to the top of the head. And it's also going to pass through the arms. Just use these kind of four points of contact. Keep the fingertips nice and light so there's hardly any weight in them. They're just used for a kind of contact. Most of the weight's in the feet. Just feel you can pass this spinal wave through the whole body into the ground. Good. And now with the hands, just start to kind of twist from foot to foot, very lightly. Just touch the foot with both hands and then go to the other one. Again, especially now, feel that the weight of the body, the, the weight of the upper body doesn't pull the movement out. Try and keep everything centered in the legs. But really also with a sense of springiness still in the knees. So everything should be quite relieved. And the more you can connect to it, the more you can center it, the more you can start to kind of pull the arms out a little bit more away from the body. So if you feel connected, center, just start to pull it out a little bit. Good. And then the last one, we're going to just work with circles with the arms. So try and feel the release the arms totally, and then see if you can pass the movement through the hip. And if you can see. No. Okay, just, yeah, good. That's it. But just feel that you circle the arms. And that movement, feel that you're going to connect it. The hips catch the hands and then they press it out. The hips catch and then press it out. So this is really about connecting now the arms, the hands especially, into the hip book. And just start to feel you can bring the movement up to a vertical very slowly. Don't rush it, take your time. Use the breath. The key thing is keep the arms following the hips. Just work up, body comes up to a vertical, just in your own time. If you're feeling pretty flexible, just use the hand of dynamic range so you come down to the ground and then raise. Down to the ground, raise. So feel the hips are now really connecting now into the arms. Good. That's it, really opening the whole body up now. That's it. Good. And once you get to the vertical, just stay, remain at the vertical and just feel that the weight's going to drop down. As the arms come down, they're just going to kind of drop down. Raise them up and let everything drop. Raise them up, drop. So you should hopefully feel pretty connected now with the feet. The knee should feel very relaxed and springy. And hopefully the shoulders now feel like they're connected into the upper, into the upper back, uh, into the lower back, through the upper back, into the shoulder blades. And hopefully now the head's just following the spine. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. Really opening the shoulders out. Here, yeah. and then open oh, out. When we're just finished with one, just for, just for the shoulders. We did a lot of weapon work. So just, just, it's basically the same idea. You pull the arms out like this, press them up. So you see where the, the bicep's gonna kind of just touch the ears. And then from this position, I don't know if you can see my hands, you're gonna open the hands out. And then it's like you're kind of pushing back this way. Don't do the knee thing, I'm just doing that for the camera. So, and then the arms come down like this and then lead the movement back. So open out to the back, open, 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 open. All the way up until the hands kind of brush against the ears again and then just drop them down to the center. So you're going to do this. Keep the body now, the core is going to be very, very kind of, in a way, very almost braced, quite static. So up, 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 up. Brush the hands to the ears. Brush the yeah, hands to the ears. Brush the biceps to the ears. That would be impossible. And then open it out. Push everything back. Keep the center nice and braced. And then just reverse it out. The thumbs are going to kind of lead the movement. Open. Open, 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 open. Reaching up. And then drop it down. And then just one more. Nice and dynamic. Up, 
Center's nice and solid. Open the movement out. All the way down. And then all the way back. What are you doing with the thumbs? Right to the top and then just release it. Down. Good. Okay. Just do a little bit for the shoulders again. So just stretch my cross. Good. And the other side. And again, trying to also lengthen the arm all the way across the body. Okay, good. Just taking the wrist up to the top. And just now it's like you're kind of pulling the bicep across the back of the head. Change in size. Good. Change sides again, and now really feel this side of the body that the, ha the hand with, that's being grabbed. Feel this whole side of the body kind of drain to release this down, and then you're going to kind of pull yourself across. So feel that the weight of the body is actually grounding into this foot in a kind of dead weight. So it's going to kind of drop with dead weight, and you're just going to pull, 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 pull. pull with the arm, and then release it. And then you just go to the other side. So imagine you've really released the root. You've got to kind of pull yourself up. Great, good. Okay, just to the back, linking the fingers, really for the shoulder blades. Press up, kind of chest up, chin back. Good. Yeah, you can also play with really fully arch, arch, arching the back, but keep basically the chest, chest kind of pulling up. And then release it. And then one more time, just see if you can basically raise the hands a little bit higher. A little bit higher. More open. You can release it, and then we're gonna do one more, just to allow the whole body to come down with it. So you're gonna get to this position. Bring the hips down and then open up to the back. And as far as you feel comfortable, just bring it all down. Really trying to open the shoulders out as if someone's behind you pulling the hands forward. As much as you can, release through the head. And real, real slow, just release it, come back up. And and then just press bands together. That's for the wrists. And then just opening the contact out a little bit and then passing a wave through the arm. Just play a little bit. To the sides maybe, a little bit out, a little bit up. Just kind of explore the joints. With, uh, Just link the palms now, so you look like this. Just press with the hands, as if you're kind of squeezing something in, in the center of the hands. And using something that's quite heavy, so you're doing quite a strong grip, but I'm doing it also with a sense of extension. So there's a tendency when we do this to do this. But in this case, really feel that you're gonna squeeze the hands, but actually this is all quite relaxed and extended out, so really feel quite strong or very strong and it's also rooted now in the lower back so it's actually much stronger because I've got a chance of, I've got a chance of being flexible to change it if I go to this I become very fragile so look for something that's quite strong and now just play with again just kind of moving the hands the center and keep the hands kind of very firm nice and sealed I think in terms of doing a Nikyo on someone I want this sense of being sealed in the grip but also that my center's mobile and can pass movement through the hands. That's really the main point when we do this kind of stuff. And this is also true, true in weapon work as well. So this has lots of applications. Good. And then just let the hands down. You're just going to kind of squeeze them to the side. Feel at the same time as you do this, you're also kind of going into the feet. So it's just kind of whole body, but really feel the hands of the feet. Hands and the feet, so that as you squeeze tighter, mainly in the little finger, ring finger, feel that the 
whole body goes boom into the mouth. So it's got that kind of impact. And if you can't really feel it in a, in a small movement, just make it big. <clears throat> so it's got this quality of oh, kind of impacting into the ground. Feel like the hands really kind of impact into the footwork. There, 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 there. You can also play a little bit with them to the front, a little bit with them out. But the key thing is just that impact. And again, the shoulders should feel pretty loose through the movement. Good. Okay, just shake the whole body. And it's everything. And go a little bit side to side. Yeah, shake the arms. And a bit of the legs. A little bit of the wrists. Put your gear back to the whole body. Play a little bit with the fingers as well, if you like. And just let everything center onto the ground. Feel the back of the body very strong, the lower body very relaxed. And then just there. So, okay, take a walk in. We'll continue. <clears throat> Good. Okay, we're just going to start just shoulder width apart, just swinging through, keep it nice and light. So just raise in there before we swing in down. Just look for the kind of full dynamic range. Try and really center the body down. Especially feel the body at the end after the after the kind of arc. Really feel where the body is in relation to your balance. And if you've got a kind of soft floor, you can also really also let the bottom fall fully to the ground. You've got a kind of tripod connection and you've got something not with no real weight into it. But if, so if I make contact with it and I really feel that I'm actually leaving using a sword, now the sword becomes a crutch. So I don't want the sword to be a crutch. I want the sword to be free in the, in the, in the movement anchored in the body. Just play a little bit with this. Keep the breath going as well. Good, keep going, let's see. Good. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so we tend to focus a lot on the dam, and sometimes we, we it tends to get, uh, oh, this is a bit, it's a sacrilegious, but the dam gets kind of overemphasized in the movement, so it becomes something like this. So it becomes just a kind of downwards movement, and there's no sense of, oh, we are, we are, we are, we are. just think a little bit, as well as, as well as dropping down through the ground, you're also now aligning to something which is arcing away. So that's also the kind of challenge of the weapon work. That you've got an object which is, is not me, and I need to include it in the movement. Now, in this case, the sword wants to do this. So I need to include that now in the movement. So if I just do this as the sword's arcing out, the body's going to come into, into a kind of contradiction with what the move what, with the movement itself. So just look for something that's going to happen to kind of arc away. So I'm going to arc with it, but I'm not going to allow that, I'm not going to allow the arc to take me away, and I'm not going to contradict the arc. By, by pulling the body just down. So just look to see if you can really align towards that arc in the body. There. So keep the down, but as much as you can start to now really feel the arc out. out. That's it. Good. So, good. Mm 
Nice. Good, and then just come into how many? So just come in into the first in the, in the first suburi. Yeah, just find up back. Really release now the, the, the front foot, and then just swinging down through the movement. Now the the, the alignment of the arch should be much easier. So just coming through, and again, if you like, just release through the ground. Fully release the cup. Just yeah, so you can really align the body. Right. Breathing into the cup. Okay, okay so I'm going to play a little bit with this technique Paul gave us on, on, the, on the Saturday, the end of Saturday. So it's also a really nice technique. And, and what, I, what I feel it's about is also hidden, hidden tension in the body. So we think we're relaxed and we're actually full of tension. So this method of going to full tension is, is actually a really nice method. I just want you to focus in the chest and the arms just to, just to really, the, 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 key, the two main points of the Kamai. And then when you make the cut. So just come to now to the Kamai, just this point, and just fill it all with tension. So go to a kind of locked out movement. And you might also feel that the arm starts to kind of straighten as well. But feel that everything goes to tension. That, and then what I want to do is release it with the breath, and then go to the movement. There. And then come back up into the Kamai. Feel that you really squeeze everything. Everything goes into contraction. Feels very uncomfortable. And then release it with the breath. Feel that it's more connected and then go. And for me also when I do this, I, I feel when I'm contracting everything, I feel that feels actually familiar to my normal come on. So in a way, this is this is telling the body that naturally I'm full of tension. Or when I come into the position, normally I'm full of tension. So it's trying to release more. Release more. So just do this a few times. And you don't need to kind of do the full, the whole body coming into tension. Just feel that you can. Tense the arms, the hands, as if you're kind of squeezing the bucket, as if you're kind of strangling the bucket in a way. And then release it, and then go. That's it. Good. And the key focus, obviously, is not the tension, it's the release. So don't get too obsessed with the tension. The tension is helpful, but the release is. Is the, is the key. And really making a distinction between what it feels like when you're tense and what it feels like when you're more relaxed and more open. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Good. Uh -huh. Good. Good. Yeah, for me, the other point of tension tends to be in the, in the upper part, so in this part. So, just do the same thing. You bring the whole body back and then really feel that you come into tension with the whole body. Not with the whole body, but with the, with the upper body, with the arms. So really feel that you kind of strangle onto the sword and you feel automatically what happens is, is, is this. The body goes into contraction. So it goes to here. And then what I want to feel is release it and then go. So really play with this. So just come into the Kamai, find the back and then tense everything up especially the shoulders, feel the neck gets contracted down and then release it with the breath and then go. So just play a little bit with this. That's it. And again, the main point is the release and feeling the difference in the body. See, one feels totally uncomfortable and one should feel much more comfortable. Obviously, in terms of the movement art, movement practice, interactive movement practice, you are looking for freedom and comfort in movement not restriction, so relaxation just works better. Ah, uh, good. So, very nice. Okay, good. Good. 
Okay, come fully now into the cut. So you're going to find the back here and then find the focus. Keep the focus nice and soft. Comes here, nice and light. Just focus in the cut. Feel it, you're just bringing this all to a stop. Try and really use this sensation you had in the release in the shoulders. Try and feel it here. So this whole position is very, very relaxed with the shoulders. And then initiate the swing. Initiate the swing and catch this hold with the hand. That's it. Good. Very nice. Good. And obviously the last movement, full of tension. Now, now it's again, it's this distinction between a sealed heavy grip and being tense in the arm. So just play with the last part. You do this, find the back, find the grip. And then what I want to do is really tense everything up through the cut, especially in the upper body and the, in the, in the, the front of the chest. So this, 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 and then really feel that you can release it through the cut without actually releasing the grip. So this is the this is actually a very hard part. But really feel that you can come here, find the cut, feel that I go into full tension with the arms. And then what I want to do is release it and remain in the position. So this is quite tricky to do because what you're what you're really doing is something like this. This tensing and then releasing it. But the arm, the, the hand stays connected to the feet. So the hand stays heavy. And in this case, the hand stays connected to the sword. So I don't release the sword at all. It's tense, 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 and then release it. And the body will automatically come back to the center. So this is quite a hard one to get a handle on. See if you can get it. Ah. And as you release, the body will naturally come back towards its own center. So everything you do with tension will draw it out from the center. So this will hopefully, through the relaxation, pull you back into the center point. You should feel that the body will just automatically do it. And you'll all, yeah, that's such a good, 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 good. You'll really feel it now also if you come to tension and I'm in a position like this with the head. As I come to tension, the neck will do this. We'll go, it will go full, fully into kind of tension. Now as I release through that movement, my body wants to get away from that. So you'll feel maybe the head starts to settle back towards the center. So just, you'll notice that with the tension, it will, it will emphasize the, the structure, the in out. And once you go to relaxation, the structure will hopefully start to slot back in to a, a more sound structure, a more comfortable structure. So just play a little bit. Better. Don't do too much with the tension, though. That's it. The main thing in this one is feeling the difference between a sealed, heavy, connected grip and a tense body. So it's focused in the, in the cut, but it's not rigid. Nice, nice, nice. Good. That's it. Good. Great. Good. And then we'll just come to the seven Saburi. So come into the back, keep it very simple. Just coming back, find the cut, nice and relaxed, release through the movement. Find number seven. This goes like that. And then just come back. You find the back, find the first Saburi, and then just release it. And find the seven. Nice and easy, just in your own time. Ground through the movement and then release it. Uh, so.
Good. So just play a little bit with the ski position. It's a little bit like when we come to the cut and then release through it. You do the same thing. Find the cut, find the thrust fully, and then release it through the body. And then the body should basically feel that you can you can sw the, the sword will just kind of swing through to the sides like this. Now if I'm in the wrong, if I'm in not exactly a great position, come to here. This I release the sword and it does dunk. It, it's basically it's basically the body's in the wrong position, so the sword will get. Uh, it doesn't know, really know where to go. So I look for, in this case, I'm basically going to bring the body side on, and then the, the body basically is going to swing through. So the body's in a position where the arm can fully find this horizontal path for the sword. Just release it. And the body, you should also feel the body is kind of grounded. Nothing should really happen as you release in the body. So think about the center, very solid, the arm's really and nothing really happens in the center of the center. That's it. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, good. Michael? Your feet at the end of the ski. Yeah. The I'm going to see. Let me spotlight. I can't see. Yeah, in this case, it's a. Uh, in this case, it's 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 a little bit. If you think of Joe work, it's a little bit more like the hito emi, this kind of stance. So it's a, it's a more kind of wider triangle, like this. So in in the case of the bokken work, it's more tighter. So so you've got this position and then this. So so it's a it's a smaller it's a smaller hand meet than the Joe work. It could be a bit wider, a bit more more open. But I've basically got this kind of triangular. And a hito emi posture where I'm basically just wedged off, wedged off the line this way, rather than being in full, full, full hammy like this with the sword, which basically blocks the blocks the sword in this position. I can do it by kind of pulling it out, but if I just release it, it's gonna go boom, it's gonna get locked on the center. So in this case, I just want to just kind of open out a little bit, but it's really anchored in the shoulder and anchored in the in the back hip. So it's got that kind of that kind of goal. If someone was if someone's to push the, the tip of the sword, the feelings that it goes the, like right into the into the back. Directly into the back. Yeah. So it's a kind of it's a kind of hito, it's a, yeah, it's really a kind of hito emi position. And uh, something like that. Yeah. With it and a little bit if you just think in terms of the Joe work. So if you like, just play with the Joe. <clears throat> or play as if the Balkan's a Joe. You've got that. There, and then it's basically the same, but it's a little bit shorter with the with the sword. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Uh, okay. That's it. Good, good, good. It's also nice to do with, if you can, with a kind of light makiwara or a tree. So something where you've got a kind of blunk, and then I can feel a real sense of stability blunk, through the, through the, so really through the back foot. Yeah, that's a nice, nice, nice. Let's see. Ah, Serena, bye bye. <laughs> Okay, good. Ah, uh, so. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, good. So we'll look at this slicing movement and then cut through that the Lewis was showing at the end of the class. And also Sasha was doing it really in the, on the Sunday as well. So I'm just going to break down the slash. So you're going to start with the right foot forward. Just slice out to the, to the front side. So sometimes what, what I show is this, this one. Come in this way. This is, a, this is a kind of 90 degree one. In this case, you're going to go to the front diagonal. So you're going to come forward into the side this way. So the first movement, let's go from this way. You can start here. You Slice across this way. So the right foot comes forward and the left just follows that way. Okay. Just practice that, just 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 to get the move. 
very, very simple move, but it's actually quite difficult to do well. Oh, yeah, that. That's it. So now the movement's much smaller, the, the, the windows are connecting the sword work to the hip and the center is much smaller. So this is why shorter movements tend to be more difficult. And that's because it's quite an unfamiliar movement. We don't practice them a whole lot. Let's see if you can get it. Uh, okay, good. Okay, good. So, I really think, even though this is quite small, this is quite a dynamic movement. So, normally when I do this one to the side, it's really a sense of cutting out. Now, in this case, you're going to actually you're going to actually travel forward. So the feeling's slicing out this way. So I really feel that the body's really going to move. So I start in this position. So I can do that. Or I can do much more sense of I'm actually slicing into something. So it's like that. What I'm actually doing in this case is that the person's in front and I'm slicing right through to the, to the side. So if you think in terms of uh, blah, 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 this has this got really got a sense of slicing out. But the person's right in front of you and you've got a sense of this slicing out. Now it's quite dynamic, but small. It's a small move, but it's very dynamic. So it's Slicing out this way. Slicing out this way. Let's try a few more. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Good. That's it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Great. That's it. Good. Good. Okay, good. So we're going to add the cut in. So now you're going to do again something a little bit different. You go here, not what we normally do. So you're going to come through, take a step back, and cut down on the left side. It's this way. So if you think in terms of technique, we tend to usually, or I tend to stick with Ikkyo, Shigo Nagi. As soon as you go into Kaiten Nagi's, Koshi Nagi's, these are really require complex movements, much more complex than the basic technique. So now you can do a little bit more complex thing. You come here and then. This way. You have a much more complex movement. So, in terms of footwork, the feet come in and step back this way. And it's really done a little bit on the spot. So, it's again cutting in through and then drawing the body back. So, good, give it a try. Let's see. Nice. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay, good. So let's see, in, in terms of actually Sasha was showing it really, really well. So in terms of this move, he was doing the movement like this, coming through this way. Now, this is a really tricky move because the, 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 your feet are coming together through the movement. Now, if I don't drain down through that movement, I just get pulled out and then the grounding, the, the cut is impossible. So just play a little bit with this cut that Sasha was doing. You're going to bring the feet together this way and really feel you ground through the movement. Yeah, and then drop it to the back. So you're going to really ground through. You can do this out however you like with the sword. The key thing is that as you raise, you drain. Raise your drink. So you're in a position where the feet are pretty close together. You've got a very small base and I need to really ground through it. And then from here, release it and find the cut this way. Just play a little bit with that. Tricky to do well again. Yeah, that's it. 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 Good. That's it. Nice. Very nice. Nice. Shh. 
Good. Good, just coming back to the full movement now. So again, now the, the challenge in, in terms of the this movement, if you were to do something like Shivanagi, which is more simple, you'll basically step in, turn and cut. Now that gives me much wider chance to much more of a chance to ground the movement because I'm working always with a wider base. This and the center is just kind of coming in and finding the ground. Now, in terms of Kaitanagi, what you're doing is entering into a small base and then you're pulling back with the center. Now, what that basically translates to is the body's going to come in and then I draw the center back at the same time as extending forward. So you've got almost two, of, it's not really opposing, but you've got the center draw back and you've got the extension out. Now, if I'm not really grounded in that, then the body gets just pulled back or I just lose the body. So when you think now you're doing a little bit of a complex thing, this way comes in and then draw back, drop everything. But just play a little bit now with this, uh, working with Titan slicing out, in, drop. And really feel at the end, boom. So you're drawing the body back, but you're extending it forward at the same time. So, so. And this is just the cut down part of the, of the technique. So this is where you track the person. And this is really the end of the technique. In terms of Kaiten Agri, we do the throw, but this is actually the end. This is where I track them and they're really exposed. So that's this is really the finish of Kaiten Yeah, good. Okay. Good. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So the problem with doing complex movements is that we tend to we try and think them through. So try try and really feel the movement. Feel 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 the movement with the center. So you do this and then really feel the movement's coming from here. So take all your concentration, everything, towards the center. Try not to think about it. So, I can think all the way through the movement. But just think about the movement and the center. And also really play, you can also be, feel free to play with releasing through the movement. So my real concern is the body, not what happens with the sword. But just play a little bit. Really get a sense that you're going to take everything to center. Center, center, center. That's nice. That's it. All right. Good, and then just add one more cut to the end. So you're going to start from the slice, slice out, draw the body through, cut down, and then from here you're going to release it into a yokumi. You're going to draw the back leg in, and then cut through. You're going to open now out into a yokumi. So you start here, slice, draw through, cut down on the left side, release it towards the right side, and then back. And this is just one sided. Oh. Good. Next. This, this last move is quite explosive. I feel that it's going to explode out from the center. So when you do this move, this, 
this, you've got a really strong connection into the center, and now feel that you press the center through it, and it's got this kind of oh. the whole the whole movement kind of explodes out of the body. Now, if I if I if I do this, the body falls forward for it. So really, again, it goes back to this idea that as you raise, the body sinks. But this is quite an explosive finish. So you've got this position, and then you boom, release through it this way. So I feel everything releases through the move. So you've got this nice quality of being very stable, fixed, firm, and then boom. And then you go back to a kind of firm, fixed at the end. So just play with these kind of states. Okay, the last two minutes or so, just to kind of cool down, just use the hands up and the hands out. You're going to do the same movement, so you slice out, roll through, find the top of the head, cut back, and then roll through on the ground this way. And if you like, actually just keep to the right side, because everything we've done is sort of, just keep to the right, he's in, roll through here, cut down, and then flow through it this way. And just do it nice and slow, a little bit like Johnny was doing, very, very slow movement. Slow, slow, do as slow as you can do. Good. Just keep everything centered, grounding. Nice and relaxed. Nice. Ah. <laughs> Good. Okay, one quick point before we finish. I'm going to work on this to, to this week as well. So we didn't really get time to look at was this idea of how you transition handwork from sword work. So the sharpness of the sword work, this kind of real kind of sharp cutting quality really needs to be translated because if I just do sharpness in the hands during, during the movement, it's very rigid and I'm actually not using the hands to the, to the full, full extent. So basically you need to make the, these movements a little bit more circular. So in terms of this works now much more spiraling movements through the, through the body. So we'll look at it the rest of the week, so totally run out of time. But just feel, as you do this, you've got really a sense of opening these kind of movements out much more now into spirals. So it's really using the full kind of um, articulation in the, in the joints. The sword work tends to be a little bit sharper. So just the last one or two, just do it real slow and just think about just opening these movements out a little bit more. So it's really grounded in the sword work. It's just going to open out a little bit more, a little bit more circularity. So, and we will work on this this week. Good. That's it. Great. Okay, good. We will stop that. Good. So, hey, Domo, I got it. What was that? Thank you. Good. I enjoyed Thank that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the great step into the day. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the day, everyone. <laughs>